Good day, this is week 19 of a 52-week series on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth, and today I'm going to really get under the hood and take a look at the IS definition schema. If you've watched the series in order, you'll likely notice that I'm doing a mini-series on the IIS configuration, and this is the third and final week on IIS's configuration there. In the previous two weeks, we looked at the configuration files in IIS 6 and 7, and how all the files work together, and then we looked specifically at the application host.config. Well, today I want to take this a step further and start at the source, which is this schema that backs everything regarding IIS. So starting in IIS 7, everything in IIS is backed by a schema, and this is excellent news for us as administrators. Prior to then, it was kind of hit or miss as to what existed and what didn't. So a schema, and in this case an XML schema, is basically a definition of what is and isn't allowed in the XML config. So why this is so exciting for us is that every tool is able to use this schema. So let's take an example of Configuration Manager is a tool available in IIS. And that tool doesn't have to know every setting. It doesn't have to be programmed into the tool itself. It's able to start with a schema and dynamically build the entire tool. And programmatically, there's validation that's available in every type of API, whether it's a command line, app command, .exe, any of the programmatic options. Everything is able to be backed by the schema. So just to try to understand it a little bit better, let's dive in. And you can see I've already navigated here to C, Windows, System32, INET Serve, Config, and then one folder deeper is the schema. And originally, when 7.0 first came out, there's around six files. And now it looks like there's uh, about a dozen or so. And let's start, though. The most common one you're going to deal with here is the IS schema. But various other applications have used schemas of their own. ARR uses its own. There's actually one for ASP.NET has been built, DB Manager, uh, you know, Disk Cache, FTP, and uh, various different ones here. Okay, so let's go into the IS schema. And basically what this is, it's a definition of everything that's allowed within IIS. So at the top here, it has some helpful information if you want to skim this to understand it a bit better, but it just kind of explains the difference between the attributes and the elements and collections, and enums and flags, etc. So this starts right in at the top with system.applicationhost slash application pools. And if you listened to last week's, or if you're familiar with applicationhost.config, uh, notice that this makes a lot of sense here. You see this structure. And what this is saying here is our app pool. We have what's called a collection, which means you can have multiple app pools. And the, the friendly name that the collection starts with is add. So we're adding an app pool. And then we have attributes, the name, queue length, and stuff like that. So actually, let's take a look at one of these. And if we were to go to our app pools, right here, notice we have multiple ads. This is our collection. And we have the name is the most common here. And we also potentially have something else, like, for example, the queue length on various other settings here, too. So let's take a look at it. Managed pipeline mode. And notice it's classic. So here, we see managed pipeline mode. And then this is interesting. It uses what's called an enum, which basically says we're going to tell you you're only allowed to use these two options, integrated and classic. And again, why it's so powerful to use the schema, uh, one, if you develop a tool, of course, it's great. You can start with here. For example, is there a timeout value or is there a proxy limit or something like that? And it lets me just kind of start. And I can go here and type timeout. And OK, so there's an idle timeout. And I walk back here in the process model uh, here on the app pool. OK, we're familiar with that common setting. And I can jump down further. And we see a connection timeout here, in, again, on the sites. And then we start to get into the classic ASP. There's a few here for timeout. So sometimes I'm curious. I want to know, or is there any kind of what other limits are there? There could be, or what about classic ASP? So here it tells you every possible setting. It's almost like the registry. For IIS. Actually, it's even better in that it has everything that's, even if it's not set elsewhere, here's what is allowed and what will be used. Very powerful for us as an administrator. 
So actually, let's take a look a little bit further here and go to this idle timeout shows even more of the settings that are defined here in the schema. We see the type, and the type is a boolean would be a, a true or false, and we see a time span in this case, and we see a default value, defaults to 20, so if it's not set anywhere else, it's always going to be 20, and we see there's a validation type as well, a time range within this range here. So you can see how useful it is to have direct access to this. And look at this one, for example. This is uh, 1 minute and 30 seconds is the shutdown time limit. And while it is kind of possible to edit the schema, generally you don't want to ever change this. And this is a read-only. If you do want to make any customizations, you're usually going to do them in your application host config. This just shows you the default. I should mention that it is possible to extend the schema, and you could add your own XML file, for example, and then you can add attributes and elements within even existing sections. So it's pretty powerful, but that's beyond the normal configuration we're talking about now. That's more for the development and advanced configuration. Now if we go to sites, let's say, and you can see again what's the definition for a site. So it starts with, the equivalent, the other one was an add, it starts with a site, and you have the name and an ID, and it has to be unique, for example. That's being defined here. And whether it's auto start, defaults to true. And then you have the various bindings. And you may be familiar with the binding information. Now this one here doesn't have any particular validation that you can see here. Uh, validation has to go elsewhere. But you can see it's a string, and it is required. Uh, it can't be empty, too but in terms of breaking it into the colons and the different parts of the binding information, that of course can't be defined here. And you can see here the log extensions, what's allowed to be logged. All of this is shown here, and this is powerful because anyone developing the tool, including IS Manager, is able to glean from this information and use it in various ways. Now this was a little bit quicker today and because I didn't really have to dig into it too much except to introduce you to it and I encourage you to take a look at it see the various parts, try to understand it, understand where it's located again don't forget that it's in the schema folder here and everything, absolutely everything has to be defined here which is great and so big thanks to the IS team for the way they've developed this for us and so being aware of this and knowing where to look for it if you're looking for particular settings and attributes and limits on attributes and enums and stuff like that, this is the place to go, the place to start. This is the root of everything in IIS, or at least everything config. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great week, and I hope to see you again next week. Thank you.